Hello and welcome back to Court Above the Cut. So I'm just at Ebley Wharf on the uh, Stroud Water Navigation on the Cotswold Canals. This is a pretty nice area, very industrial and uh, also redeveloped part of the canal. You've got the Cotswold uh, connected, uh, based in there uh, with uh, Stroud Council. Um, you've got a, a coffee and wine bar. They do a really nice pint in there. Uh, I've stopped here before. Uh, as well as a few other businesses, uh, there's a uh, barbers and stuff up here. But what you have here is a is a stop lock. So this stop lock is uh, designed to basically stop the rest of the canal from flooding. It's one of the great things about the, the Stroud water is uh, the amount of streams that run into it. They've got a very good water flow into it. Um, and when this was before restoration, this was almost treated like a river. So all the all the streams used to flood into here. Uh, and then flood back out into the river through when it got too high. Now the problem is with that the water level got quite high in here so to prevent flooding further down the line um, back towards uh, sort of Sole Junction they had to put these gates in. So these are always closed uh, but obviously if you're bringing a boat through you open them close them behind you and what that happens flood water will build up on this side and not run through to the other side. It will then flood back across uh, as an emergency spillway over there. So th this was a, uh, originally a 19th, well, it's, it's a 19th century textile mill. Um, it was built in 1818, the long part of it just there. And uh, the, the bigger bit was built in 1861, which uh, replaced a section that was destroyed by fire in 1859. You've got the, um, one of the many more in points here for the, uh, for the, for the canal. So what they you can see this here is uh, it looks like the old motorway um, centre sections, which it is. So what they do is they drive the posts into the canal bed. Do you think I'll put a hole in the bed? But it actually doesn't because the canal is um, lined with a clay. It actually um, you pierce it and it just swells into into the gap and seals it. And then once those are all all set in, they use the uh, barriers as an edge in to protect from being hit by the boats put a deck down and it's a nice cheap way to, to provide some mooring um, and they're dotted all down the canal so it's part of the uh, flood uh, flood defences here you've you got the gates which shut and uh, then you've got this what well, appears to be a bridge but this uh, if you look at the levels there the levels sit just below that that overflow so whenever this floods all the water this is massive floods down across straight into the river through which is just down there so that stops the rest of the canal flooding and uh, protects all the all the um, businesses and that down there but the amount of water you're getting there is astronomical and it's it's been tested several times already and it works so keeping up with that theme we've got the uh the over, main overflow into the river it's just here flowing nicely so this is designed for uh, fish and eels to be able to pass between the canal and the river so if you, I don't know if you can see in here, I'll try and get the camera closer. Inside that sort of chute, there's lots of, uh, there's ridges basically. What that's designed for is the fish come up, get into the next section, jump up to the next section, jump up to the next section, so they can work their way up uh, and, and swim in. And I'm not too sure if the metal things over there are, are, are a similar thing. Because if you look, they're underwater that end and underwater that end. So imagine they're full of water. So maybe that's designed for fish and eels to swim up as well. Mm. Next up, we have the um, Hilly Orchard Bridge. Uh, it's just been built, rebuilt several times, uh, four times in fact, over the years. This used to be, as the name might suggest, an orchard, which covered all of uh, all of the area here. This is a Queen Elizabeth II playing fields, uh, and also covered across the road up the hill to to the to the main road there. cool thing along the canal just on the right side behind the wall just see over the top here is the uh, Dubbridge Crane. It was built in Preston in 1854 by John Stevens, uh, John Stevenson Foundry.
It costs 200 pounds 18s 2d and straight on from there we've got Dubbridge lock uh, and foundry lock there's two locks here uh, you can kind of see underneath the bridge here there's water coming out quite quickly from the end there that's basically um, it's a hydroelectric plant in there so uh, it's creating energy so the, there's a chute that comes out from the top the water runs down through uh, on the overflow so what would always be uh, basically water just running down the canal it's not just running down the canal bypassing the locks it's uh, it's creating energy as well again one thing you'll probably notice about these locks I've said it before on some of the previous videos is just how big they are so they originally carried larger boats called troves uh, which carried the coal up the uh, Stroud water onto the Thames and Severn and onto um, Brimscombe port at that point now they were all unloaded and they were um, taken onto narrow boats which went up the uh, Thames and Severn up towards the Thames and uh, towards London and the Midlands. Next we've got a lift bridge. This is right by uh, the mills here, which is a Lodge Moor Mill and Frome Hall Mill. So cloth was produced here from around the 15th century. And in the 19th century, the two mills became one of the largest wooden cloth businesses in Gloucestershire. Three fires destroyed much of the Lodge Moor Mill around 1871 to 1873. A new mill was built using both steam and water power and is still in use today. There's a company WSP Textiles, they make sort of pool table cloths and, uh, and tennis ball coverings and stuff like that here. So this is leading on to this, this, use, this is the end of the Stroud water. Uh, just up ahead here, it branches off to the left and goes on to what is the, um, is the Thames and Severn. There used to be a basin down here which no longer exists uh, and the, um, you've got just up here a gate uh, which is at, the, uh, at the, the start of the basin. Running down through here, you've got an old gas main. It's no longer in use. And this uh, metal pipe you can see all the way through. So this is the boundary gate I mentioned. This was the original entrance into the into the uh, basin, which was just up ahead here. So the canal would have split. That would have been the end of the canal. And then this was the, the next section of canal coming through. It's quite interesting here. You can still see uh, being this gate so old. You can see the old rope marks from when the uh, Horses used to pull the boats, as they're quite prominent here. It's a bit of a building site here at the moment. I think they're putting a sewer in. Uh, it's what it looks like. They're, they're definitely tunneling here. But the uh, the red brick building just over the back here is uh, is the old canal warehouse. So we would have been in the basin now. So the basin would have been in just here. And uh, yeah, that red building is is the uh, is the old warehouse which luckily still stands to this day. So thank you for watching. Please do click that like and subscribe, click that bell button and you'll be notified of my future videos. Uh, get on the uh, Cotswold Canal website, sign up. They uh, can always do more members and uh, you'll get updates on what's going on as well. But thank you very much, have a good day. Mm -hmm.